Hey everybody, on today with uh, an interesting one, I decided to do something a little bit different, shake things up a bit, and uh, decided that I am going to do a walker from The Walking Dead. I called this one a, uh, a rather interesting one. Um, this dude is at the pool, and I decided to call him Rubber Ducky Walker. So there you have it, he's got a nice little snorkel up here. And uh, gonna share this over with the page real quick, and uh, we'll get started. This is gonna be fun. Um, there we go. Now everybody can see what's going on, and I'll get started on this thing. So, yeah, right out of the gate, I just wanted to do something fun, you know, because and I know everybody does like really intense. Um, dark side of the moon type of uh, walkers but in this case I wanted to do something a little lighter um, a little more humorous with the way that uh, the Walking Dead goes um, I, I love the series I I'm a huge fan of the comics and I just wanted to do something that was really really um, creepy and still kind of macabre funny but um yeah, you know, that that's where we're going with it today. Um, I've got this guy here with uh, my drawing his brow here and got him with some waterlogged flesh. So it's kind of, you know, still got the crunched up, angry, I'm hungry face. And uh, as you can see, like I said, I've got a snorkel going on over here. I've got the goggles up here. I've got this guy um, wearing, you know, like a life preserver kind of thing because he's paranoid, a little paranoid. And um, got a rubber ducky around his waist, got the, you know, the classic water noodle right there. So, you know, even got the bell, the whistle to call the lifeguard. So it, it's just all in here. Now, what this um, line work across the front here is going to be is where he's behind the um, chain link fence, of course. And I'll get to all that as we get into the uh, detail of it. Now, this is going to be kind of small. Because of the fact that, uh, you know, this is a card, so you'll bear with me on the detail if it's not quite as um, up to par as to what we're used to seeing with the uh, Walking Dead stuff. Somewhat uh, tinier detail doesn't translate that well, you know, so we have to be careful. But, um, yeah, and I know I didn't do the uh, Inktober stuff, and I thought that since I was looking for something to mix the cards up with a little bit, I would do um, a little more of this stuff and let you guys get some of it hanging out here. And I know this is a massive, massive piece here so um, in popularity, so that's exactly what we're going to do today. Now, I've got his lips stretched out and hanging off and, you know, all gory and nasty. And um, I'm going to kind of chunk this one up a little bit where it's going up under his nose and, you know, doing the droopy thing um, that skin does when it gets waterlogged. Everything's kind of got a down curve to it. Now, when you're doing flesh like this, be sure and put in, you know, like like this, just nice little curves and dips because when it gets waterlogged, it gets it loses its elasticity and it starts to stretch and it'll wear itself out to where it starts to lose form and that'll give you that really gooey uh, saggy look that everybody wants with you know a, a character like this um, but you're gonna have like the points of the jaw back here those critical defining human features are going to be very uh, prominent and they're gonna stay up the longest believe it or not It'll be open things like um, cheeks that have no bone support that'll drop, like the cheeks up here, you know, that kind of thing is where it'll fall first. And then your eyelids will sink in, uh, making that that dark black sunk in look. And then you'll still have like um, eyelids on top, you know, sagging over and hanging off and you just weird kind of features and stuff like that. And it looks, it looks like a bulldog kind of. Um, after a while, because the human face is still got a heavy brow, and it'll just start getting, you know, nasty. But um, 
I'm going to make these sunk in here because I just like the look of it better to make that skulled look. Um, going to leave some of the flesh up on the nose here like it got bit off or, you know, maybe waterlogged and fell off kind of thing. Um, just going to kind of put some gooey stuff like hair and things like that in here on top of the head. And uh, that would be matted down and and slimy so that wouldn't show up a lot but uh here we go with this one um i want to make sure it's going to show up but i'm going to go over to a three here oh that's not my three that's my seven um i'm going to go to a real finite three and hopefully i'm i'm so heavy-handed because i've been inking a lot lately hopefully i won't snap it off uh too badly during the process here I can get some of these teeth in and where the fluoride and the water has really messed with them I'm gonna have them kind of stand out bright and there goes the lead we knew that was gonna happen but uh, I'm gonna put in these ridges for the sockets for the teeth where the bone comes up a little bit and then I'm gonna put in these bottom teeth here I'm going to give him really slim and funky bottom teeth um, just for sake of doing something different because I don't want them to all look the same. And because of his jaw being disconnected, you know, from the rest of the torso, it would also uh, decay a little faster. So, and just to be a little more gruesome about it, I'm going to refine some of this lower shadowing on some of this flesh and make it look a little heavier on this side there he's starting to come out a little bit I just want to strengthen up some of those finer lines make them come out a little more but I don't want to give him pupils that look alive though so I've got to be careful there because I don't want it to look weird but I'm gonna go ahead and start in on this uh, switch back to my five here and start in on these goggles these are just like swimmers goggles you know nothing big um, somebody asked me if they were flight goggles when I <laughs> first sketched it because <laughs> it's so light you know um, I was just like no really you're gonna go there with me and I know these aren't I'm doing this by hand so it's not I'm doing this freehand, so I know it's not perfect, but um, it is what it is. So, you know, we've got that uh, dreaded statement back because basically I'm not going to go into all that. Um, I just want to have a little bit of fun with it. And I'm going to put this one, I'm going to put the shadow on this side for this one, and I'm going to put the shadow on this side for this one like it's warped. Um, like it's pressing down and changing directions just a little like it's tilting to give it more of a realistic look like it would sit on the head and uh, Of course, we're gonna have the tip of the nose where it's all capped off right here We'll put that ridge in there like that so you can tell that they're actual water goggles We'll pop that off a little bit But yeah, um, I'm going to put a little bit of hair on the head here, and I'm going to put it like this because it's pinned down by the goggles, as we see right down here, which like I said, I didn't find that out as actual hair, which I probably should have done a little more. But what I'll do is I'll comb it down that way, like it's pressed. And... Um, a lot of people like to do the stringy individual hairs when they do the zombie stuff because they like them to, you know, do that that funky thing where they look like they're all rotted and dried out and stuff. But not me, man. I want it to be healthy, solid, segmented hair. <laughs> the reason I do that is because of the fact that I want it to look wet like he climbed out of the water. So I've got that strap right there. 
Now, if you see this right over here, um, if you're ever drawing someone that's been waterlogged, and it, this is a, a flesh thing, and I know it's gross, but it is what it is just to get it right. If you're ever drawing a zombie fresh out of water, loop their ears over kind of like a pig ear, um, fold it over on top, because the reason of that is that it'll stick out like this one right here. I'm going to fold that ear lobe over this way, and the reason I do that is because of the fact that I want that to come out and there's a little segment of hair right there that I want to be funky and in the way and whatnot. But um, that ear is going to come down here like this, and it's going to crunch over on itself like that. So that's what you guys have. And let's see here. Gotta put in a lot more flesh here. Get the ripples in and all that stuff. <clears throat> and a lot of people don't like to draw um, walkers like this, you know, where they're all sunk in and whatnot. And his chest will be all sunk in and all that. I'm gonna have. Um, yeah, I'll have it all crushed in and all that, but uh, I'm going to make this like a t-shirt, and I'm going to have that like torn open down here and all that, but uh, yeah, making it stretched out like it's waterlogged, so it's going to hang over and be all weird. Um, I like to draw it to where this stuff doesn't come out exact. I mean, it doesn't have to be perfect by any means, um, as far as I'm concerned. But I do love to uh, make it look reminiscent and uh, more lifelike than my normal animated style. But I don't go quite as far as some of the other guys. You know, uh, Jason Kimball uh, does a really great job with realism for, uh, for that kind of stuff, especially with skeletons and anatomy and, you know, skulls and stuff, because he... Um, He's working on the Walking Dead series, um, the card series, the sketch card series. And he, he's done some phenomenal stuff with this stuff. But um, for me, uh, I try to get it a little more cartoony, like a, uh, oh, like a heavy metal type of feel or like an 80s rock band kind of thing. I like to get that kind of feel going on so it has that that look and that's where my style's going away from the animated stuff the the manga-esque type of open cartoon style and I want to get away from that I still want it to have that kind of um, dynamic but I want it to have a uh, different edge and feel to it as a comic book type of look so that's you know because people have been asking me all the time you know it's like you're really color dependent, man. You don't draw a lot of stuff for color, and it's just, nah, I draw all the time for color. I'm very color dependent. That's what you just said, but um, they say, it just, you know, it looks flat, and I was just like, well, we're not going to have that. With the books and stuff coming out that I've got going on, I've got to make sure that all that's covered. Um, and as far as today goes, if I sound really tired, I apologize. It's because I... Um, used my voice a lot today because I was doing some coaching stuff, man. I was out there teaching people. Um, on a serious note, I was doing some of the marketing training that I'm doing and finishing up some of the overlays for the uh, how to draw comics stuff. So you guys can get that stuff out there and get, you know, your courses and whatnot, as well as, <clears throat> excuse me, get into um, – the marketing side of stuff because you know a lot of people have been asking me about that and that's just it's going it very well thank you very much i so appreciate all the support that i'm getting and the feedback and you know the interest in trying it out and whatnot and um i i bloated up his back here by the way um not to get distracted off this i bloated up his back because he's got a you know, people fill up uh, their bodies fill up with either water or they fill up with um maximum absorption and start getting air pockets 
And if this guy was in the pool, you know, that's what's going to end up happening. You're going to get that kind of frayed, warped um, look to him. And that's exactly what I'm giving him right here across the back there. I'm going to make that tongue look uh, a little more rotten and warped in there by uh, changing the shape of it a little bit. Like it has no moisture to it and it's all twisted up. Uh, we'll get that going. And I want to put in the other side of this nostril where he's still got some cartilage and gristle up in there, but it's it's um, shrinking up into his face from decay and decomposition. So we've got that going. Uh, we've got a strong headshot here. I think I'm going to go this way with this and start on the neck um, because this is going to leave this bubble effect where the flesh from his neck has folded down on itself and it's just going to kind of bulb out there a little bit and it'll do that all the way around because as it comes down it'll start to squish and wrinkle and whatnot and I want it to look really bad right in there like it's just squishing on itself and compressing him down and that's exactly what's going to happen. It's the bones are going to be the only thing to hold him because he has so much water absorption in his system until he dries out. And even then it won't come back. It'll still be nasty and gnarly and whatnot. And because he's got so much water in him right now, I'm going to put that down here too because this is going to be like the peck hanging in his shirt. So where the flesh is pulled down. I'm going to put it pulling on the fabric. Make it kind of hang down there a little bit. And uh, put a little mass situation going on down here too. But um, yeah, I always love drawing these characters. I did this, uh, I did one of these for Comic Palooza a couple years ago when I worked with uh, Elizabeth Ann Hamilton for Geek Rep. I know a lot of you guys have been asking me about that if I was going to do something similar uh, to what I did then whenever I got asked about that. And <clears throat> yeah, that's that's pretty much what I'm doing here. It's you know it's a it's a zombie, and uh, that's where we're going with it. They had me do a, a zombie print for the uh, for the show to show some stuff. You know, I had to do some material and whatnot. And I did um, the Nova, Batman, uh, Squirrel Girl, and I did those live for the kids on the remotes, How to Draw Comics um, panel. And uh, then I turned around and did a couple of um, that Thanos that everybody loves so much and a couple of other things that I uh, tied into that. Um, let's see, there was Thanos, there was the zombie, and... Um, there was a Predator watercolor piece that I did. And I don't normally do prints to sell. I, I was giving them away. I was I was giving them away. Um, still still am. Matter of fact, I still have some of them around. And uh, I just give them out as portfolio packs or, you know, freebies kind of thing. Whatever, whatever floats your boat. Uh, if I see someone that wants to see some prints, you know, I'll give them away that kind of deal for promotionals and whatnot and send them in packs and junk and uh, get them out there. But, uh, yep. And I was working on recording the, uh, recording a couple of the podcast episodes this morning for uh, Interfusion Marketing. And it was cracking me up because people were constantly calling in and I just had to shut everything down on Facebook today. I was just like, really, man, you guys, are gonna, you're going you're gonna to keep buzzing in on me. I got to freaking record this stuff. But uh, that's why I was offline most of the day. I just had to get this stuff knocked out so that you guys can get a hold of it. And it was funny because um, – as I was recording the getting started section, which was I always save till the end because that way I can do a full overview of exactly what's in my footage and um, 
I wanted to do something really cool with uh, the whole course thing because you know it's based off the the mental grip technology that I wrote my book for of getting started and overcoming the fear of getting started and then it's about um, the first processes of, of marketing and getting your stuff out there and getting moving and that's part of what I was training on and talking about today and um, I had a client call me screaming uh, because she was freaked out because of her uh, her blog not taking off like she wanted to and she couldn't figure out what was going on with it and I I walked her through it and whatnot and I asked her if it was all right if I told everybody about it um, you know I'm not gonna give out her name or whatever and uh, but she and her husband have a blog for their business and it cracked me up to no end because what ended up happening was her husband had published half the blog by putting it into um, their WordPress and didn't publish it live he thought he, he thought he had published it and they thought that their site was down and they didn't have anything going and all this mess and they were so afraid of getting started and she's you know having anxiety about it and all this mess and then um, you know I had to deal with that all day today and it's just so ironic that it was that one particular thing so I was like you know what let, let's turn this around and let me help you because this is a prime example of what I'm talking about and I made her into a case study so you guys are gonna get to see that coming up pretty quick too that's awesome um, long way around around it but hey <laughs> whatever um, <laughs> but yeah um, I, I just do this kind of stuff all the time and you know it's one of those things I do need to get this material out there I really do because of the fact that everybody's been begging me for it and I've been uh, hitting a consistent slump of uh, going through step by step you know uh, even I hit confidence issues once in a while and I this is all new material uh, for you guys especially coming into um, this last year and stuff you know but uh, I made a promise and I got to get this stuff out there and that's what I've been hammering away at and I I got into a perfectionism uh, clamp myself yesterday uh, I was recording and recording and went back through a bunch of it today and I was just like this is horrible I can't quit this out I can't put it out and it's like you know just stop and put it out and leave it alone and um, I'm looking forward to it I, I really am I'm all, I'm all I amped up and excited about it and waiting for everything to uh, come together to check it off as far as the comics go I am inking the very last page um, of Lone Rider number one I finally got it ready to go I will be finishing it tonight and sending it over to the colorist uh, for you guys to check out and I'm um, going to kick up that Kickstarter on time for um, right around the 15th, like I was planning to. And uh, I'm going to start shooting out information on that as soon as this is inked up. And I can show some examples of that work coming along. Now, this right here is a big rubber duck. And it's a crappy rubber duck at that. But it's a rubber duck. Okay? So we're going to put the rubber duck around the waist to the zombie and that's where we're gonna go with it and I'm trying to make it look cartoony and um, soft and easy going so I've got to put like eyelashes on it uh, to make it look softer because I arched the eye too much uh, when I sketched it and it looked really rough so I'm gonna make it look like you know a baby duck kind of thing with the eyelids And I'm going to put the big smile on it right here. There we go. Now I'm going to put a little crack right in here. And the reason I'm doing that is because the bill on the duck is hard plastic. <clears throat> Most of these things come with a hard plastic flotation device type of um, plastics on them. I don't know if they're fiberglass or if they're just 
you know, standard plastic or what they are. Um, not my department, but I'm putting a, a light little crack in here like, you know, this, uh, this character's been hit over the head. And then, because um, the bulb comes down around here normally, and then there's like a collar where it goes to the soft rubber that floats. But uh, just depends on where you get it. And I'm going to put half this eye like gone out of here. Just missing a big gap out of that side. Because <clears throat> I want this duck to look jacked up. And it's probably going to look stoned. Um, and just for the youngsters watching, that's what happens when you're chemically controlled by substances you should not take. So don't do that. That's what your mom and dad are trying to protect you from. So stop it. <laughs> but uh, yeah, like I said, worst looking duck ever. But that's okay. Moving on. Anyway, um, got to get in here for these rib divots and uh, get those going. Because even though the, there's a shirt on top, I still want it to have that kind of uh, creepy bone skeleton look. And you can do that by having the shirt sink into those holes uh, that represent the ribs. So think about that when you're drawing this kind of stuff. see well it's pretty cool so far if I do say so myself he looks jacked up that's where we're at but um, yeah I'm gonna put oh, the sleeve line right here too because I want this guy to be like I said one of those people that wears you know I want him to be one of those people that wore a shirt in the pool kind of thing you know, it always cracked me up um, don't get sunburned because you'll wear it <laughs> And then you'll see that one poor guy with all the, you know, he's afraid of the water and won't go in. <laughs> I'm not much of a recreational swimmer myself, so um, I don't know that I would be in all the floaties and stuff. But uh, seeing a little bit of the, of the pool side, you know, gist of it, <clears throat> this is an extreme case, as it were. So we're going to go ahead and put in this... Um, Right behind this ear here, which that's the ear right there, I'm going to put in this snorkel. This guy looks like he came right out of a, a store we have here called Five Below, um, which is like a dollar store kind of thing, but it's targeted for five bucks. <clears throat> and uh, I just wanted to see what's going on with that and every little you know dollar store kid trinket you could stick on this guy is what I wanted to put on him he looks like he's going to the ocean not the pool but uh, <laughs> I just had to <coughs> excuse me um, there's the bottom of the snorkel right there we're gonna cut that out real quick and I put in the slide piece um, a lot of people will ask me about this kind of thing all the time when I do this. And it, it's always funny to me because it's like, hey, man, you put in the mouthpiece wrong for that snorkel. It's supposed to, you know, the snorkel's going that way. You can't put it in his mouth if it's tipped up. The thing is, though, modern snorkels normally have that, uh, that guard on them right there to where the pieces come off, to where you can replace the piece for the snorkel and uh, reuse it for someone else. And uh, I like to do that so it gives it a little more dynamic with the turning of the, the mouthpiece just to give the shadow. <clears throat> so right there's where it swivels. If anybody asks or anybody wants to get, you know, tense about that for any reason, there we go. But uh, But yeah, you guys have been very supportive with this stuff, and I appreciate it because um, going into multiple niches, which, like I said, I had some uh, someone who will not be named tell me that you couldn't do more than one niche, which is total malarkey, um, <clears throat> especially under one 
uh, distinct profile and user set. I want to be a hardcore advocate for saying that's wrong. Uh, I'm not one of those type of people that wants to be right. You know, in conversations, I, there's the there's the right way, the wrong way, a good way, a better way, you know, a worse way. There's there's depths and conditions to it. And it's not about being wrong against anybody or right against anybody. It's about being solid in the way that I'm talking about doing it. <clears throat> I'm not saying it can't be done, and I was told that it couldn't. Social media platforms don't allow for it. Well, social media platforms are what I specialize in. Marketing won't allow for it. Niche markets won't allow for it. Well, niche marketing is what I specialize in. So, you know, that's my, <laughs> that's my consultant's, uh, that's my consulting bread and butter. So, <laughs> yeah, we'll, 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 we'll take that with a grain of salt. But <clears throat> just to prove the point, that when I came back out, I was going to, you know, when I came back out introducing my marketing stuff after this revamp, that's taken way longer than I thought it was going to because I didn't um, hold sure to the way that I wanted to go when I wanted to get back into Internet marketing and get back into the public eye and go from consulting in the background, making everybody else famous, back up to the front. And I didn't know which way I wanted to go with that. Um but I decided to go in uh, both feet first into social media. And uh, that's the market that I, I stepped into. Social media and internet marketing, getting started, getting the foundation, production over, <clears throat> excuse me, production over, over per, um, perfectionism. And, you know, community over competition. And getting started, you know, get in there and do it. Get it started, get it going, show you can do it. You don't have to be a million dollar expert to go in and, and kick out the best results possible. Everybody seems to think you have to, and it's better if you have that. Um, but it's not necessar necessary to make it happen and get started. Um, if you've got a comic book you want to put out, put it out. If you've got a podcast you want to put out, put it out. If you've got a book you want to write and you know what you know the content, Put it out. People fight so much on that. But then on top of that, they once they get started, they think, oh, wow, now I've got it out there. The secret says that I'm going to be, you know, the law of attraction as the secret goes. They say, well, the secret says that I can do this now. And it's just, no, you can't. You have to do the work. <laughs> you got to keep going and keep pushing and keep doing. And... Um, Comics and business alike is huge in that regard um, because of the fact that it's so easy to fall into that trap of not producing once you get the job or not doing what you need to do to keep it going and keep your position. Um, don't fall victim to that. You know what I mean? Now, if you wonder why this flower is over here at random, I'm putting the edges for this balloon here because what I'm going to do is I'm going to have this be a hard floaty for this guy's arm. Because like I said, I wanted to put every little dollar store trinket on him possible. And there you go. Now, I didn't put the back over the strap blue life preserver thing on there because <laughs> I just didn't want to go that extreme with it. I figured this was far enough. But, uh, yeah, I did have that idea in there, and I did think about starting that. But anyway, back to the topic of that. If you you know if you're starting something and you're wanting to get your stuff out there, um, if the longer you wait, waiting is a choice within itself. And if you're waiting, then you're going to be waiting for a while because until you start it and do it, it's not going to happen to you or for you. That's a lotto shot. I mean, it does happen, but you know it's so rare to get out there and show that kind of thing going on you have to step back and do your own thing and if you don't you're not going to end up getting what you want as the result you'll be you know 50 60 years old going what are you doing well i'm waiting so you know i'm waiting for the perfect shot well guess what you're not going to have that it doesn't exist production over perfectionism put it out there show it off 
if it's bad, do the next one better. That's the, that's an incentive. That's not a failure, you know, um, in the way you think it is. It's it's an, uh, a a process, a process. That's exactly what we're looking for. It's a process. And besides the fact, you know, everybody says flat out, if you're not failing, you're not trying. So, you know, every successful person says that. And I say it all the time and I say flat out, you know, uh, oops, I screwed this up or I failed and, you know, now I got to fix it. Well, guess what? Uh, the second version of it, the next version of it, the next issue, going to freaking kill it, you know, because I know not to do that the next time. And it is what it is. That's, that's uh, that right there. Give up on it. Lock it in. Say you're done with that part. OK, it is what it is. Now move on because you can't go back and change it. Um once it's out there, because it's pretty much been seen, shared, done, whatever, and, you know, go out there and just do it again and get it going, you know, whatever you messed up on that issue, that last one, if it's not perfect, then push through and make it as close to it as you can, but don't kill yourself in the process because that's no good, no fun. Oops, knocked some stuff off my table here. Bear with me a second. I'm picking up my pins off the end of my table. I knocked them all off. <clears throat> Thank you guys for all the compliments and the, the views and stuff. I appreciate that. Um, I know it's late in the evening in comparison to what I normally do. I have been trying to get some more things lined up to uh, go off and get this stuff done earlier. But this book has been crushing me lately. Uh, I'm trying to push it through and get it all done up. I'm going to put something floating there in the water in the background. Um, <clears throat> going to cut in this water so we can see that going on. Try not to make any obscure <laughs> um, strange shapes in the water four walkers go into the water two walkers come out <laughs> sorry <laughs> could not resist um, I've even got a little walker back here in the background uh, right here <clears throat> now she's waterlogged however it's even worse though because she's got a little bit of hair going on but that's about it so we're going to put that little sprig of hair right there on top and then we're going to draw her skull and we're going to draw the other side i put in a couple of teeth which we'll I'll have to ink real fine to that point but uh no lower jaw. It fell off in the pool. She lost it. Oh, and no. So we're going to put in that little strap right there. And like I said, that's going to be it. Um, going to have that little tuft of hair on the side there, and that's going to be that one. Tiny little skull back there, but hey, there it is. Now I'm going to go in and draw in the rest of this water. Following these lines here, trying to not to scribble it up too much to where it looks weird. You know, I want it to look like water or muck anyway. <clears throat> and now I'll grab this right here, which is a chair leg from the side of the pool. Just going to put in some of these details. And this one's gnarly and bent. Looks like somebody ran over a deer. But <laughs> her dear decoy. <laughs> I'm going to draw on this little chair back here. You know, these, this is like one of those barca lounger type things that they have, you know, around the pool and stuff. You know, the, the loungers. Um, not barca lounger. That, that wouldn't be at a pool. But um, it's one of those big loungers that you see at the pool with... Uh, 
everybody laid back in there and it's all folded up and crunched back there. And then we've got this table, which is going to be busted, which I'm going to put quite a gap right in here, kind of an angle there to show it's broken loose. To separate it and make it look off. That's why, it, you know, when it fell and hit, snapped off, so it's bent. I'm going to make this side of the table bent up a little bit because these are normally fiberglass or aluminum tables, depending on where you go. Um, a lot of people put, you know, a lot of these places will put out uh, aluminum tables and they'll be bolted down or whatnot. But with the zombie apocalypse, nothing's sacred. So um, we've got that going on. And then right across over here, I'm going to put the, I'm going to put this, there's the edge of the pool right there. Okay. There's, the, there's the interior side where the water is and that's the exterior side on the top. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put a couple of these cracks in here, um, going across where these segments were supposed to be for the, uh, concrete. And we're going to bust that up a little bit, put a little grass coming up out of there. And then we'll draw this side where the grass is growing up. And this this is going to be so small, I'm just going to scribble this in and make the impression of it. But uh, I want to go ahead and put in a couple of these others right up under here, you know. And normally that would have a shadow underneath it. When I color it, I will have the shadow there. But for now, I'm not going to do that. I don't want to black that out. I just want it to be gray for the concrete. You know, that, that milky gray kind of concrete color, you know, that is distinct to concrete. But um, now we're going to do the fun part. <clears throat> I'm going to try to remember where all my patterns are so I can do the fence. This is going to be interesting because I'm going to try and do this as chain link. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down here to the bottom and I'm going to pick a line. And you know what? I'm going to make this. <clears throat> I am going so I don't have to double line this and really risk it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take my nine here. And I'm going to go through and buckle up every piece so it goes back and forth. That is crazy. What did I get myself into? Okay. Now, as long as I can see each one of these lines, you know, it looks funny to do that on purpose, to go through each line this way. But you know what the detail in this would be when it comes out? If you didn't, it would look just like straight square grid lines it wouldn't have the curvature to it when I go back through and cross and I know that looks funky right there but trust me it will look like chain link when I go back over it so I'll start back over here and go back on this line right here and what I'll do is I'll draw over just a little And that goes right on that rib line. That's cool. Now I'll buckle it just a little. And I don't know if you can see that or not. Hopefully. But just zigzagging it back and forth and making it buckle just a little. And bow one line. You know, bow these lines back and forth. Just over the straight edge. Where it looks thicker. And see, like I said, just overlap them just a touch and then buckle that line like it's like you're not inking it straight. Just curve it just a touch with this bigger line, and that's the way it's going to go through. And like I said, I can do it all the way across now that I have them set, but anyway. It's all about making them buckle the same way to where they need to go to look like they're fenced across the pattern. You know, and I mean, that's exactly what it looks like. It looks like wire going across. Um, 
I'll start right here in the middle, which will be odd, but I'll start there nonetheless. <clears throat> Think about it like drawing Spider-Man webbing um, when you do these. Just kind of buckle them just a little bit so they look organic, you know, so they look individual, but still cross to where they're pursed together, and that's the way it's going to look. And like I said, once I got one of them started, I can get one of them going because you go over and under, kind of like a cross stitch kind of thing or a, a weaving type of pattern. Just go over and under and over and under. And once you have the pattern set, you can do this all day long. And it'll come out looking like fence. And as you can see, it's already starting to. So just got to make sure that you keep your lines going. This one's an over, it's an under. And see, that's the way they go. Now this one is going to be an over. Under and over. And now I'll flesh these out and finish this up. And when you zigzag them from the over and under process, it makes them have um, a shift to them so they come out looking like that like they're connected this one's an under you see this one's an under this one's an over this one's an under over and they just swish one way one way or the other and that's all you have to do and it gives them that buckled look see that's starting to look like fence right Hey, Kenneth, Steve, thanks for making it. So, but when you do it, though, just like I said, just go one side, lean one side, lean the other, and it makes it kind of a swishing mark. And um, when you go over and go under, you go from tilt it to the right, tilt it to the left, and then it just pops that right off, and it always works every time. One's an under. Over, under, right there. That one's over. Now, the funny thing about this, too, is I picked up this effect um, a while back, and it doesn't always work the same way because uh, it depends on the fence that you're doing. So be careful that you practice which fence you're going to do and know that ahead of time because what ends up happening is, is you'll you'll mess up your patterns depending on the next row. you got to be very careful with that because see how I bent that one right there? It, and the reason I did that, it doesn't um, look like it's an over and under there and it looks like under, under, and then that one curves up like it's over. The reason I did that, say this guy grabbed the, the wire there, you know, that kind of thing. You can use those imperfections to your – artworks advantage if you're careful and you pay attention to the pattern and you you know you know where you're going with it so this is an under right here over under and I've got this reversed so it's looking a little different but yep that's where we're at but uh you know that's that's cool. The coolest thing about this is it's an obstacle. It's an optical illusion anyway. So, like I said, if you know where you're going with it, you can really, really own it and make it look awesome. And this is kind of what Todd McFarland did back in the day with the uh, Spider-Man webbing. You know, I mean, he really looks like he's behind a fence now. And I know it's a little denser than what we would like it to be, but it is what it is. So. Um, and the reason for that is because of the fact that I've got um, these lines thicker and I want him away from the fence a little bit to give that depth. Because if he was right up against the fence, it would be like more of a facial shot. And I don't want to do that because, uh, you know, everybody does head shots for these zombies. And it's not fun for me that way. It's just not. I'm tired of seeing, you know, the close up chomper, you know, raw type zombies. I, that's why I did this guy this way, so I could have more fun with him. Okay, over, under, over, under, under. 
over, under, and over. Come on. pencil wasn't working because I, I stretched that one out as well by the way and I did that on purpose with the chain link I wanted it to look like it was aged like it was pulled out and I pulled it apart right there if you notice that shift right in this one it looks a little stretched and then it goes right back into the line here and the reason for that was because of the fact I wanted it to look stretched so now I've got to get this one going so we can get across the head here Going right across the face. There it goes. Right there. Now I've got this one right here. I'm going to mark that wire. Wall in there. So we can get that all going we've got background noise going on we've got stuff going on over there in the uh, other side of the office it's all good though <laughs> Reason I said anything is because I got asked. <laughs> I just got asked, what was that noise in the back? That's my daughter squeaking her chair and digging into her desk over there. She likes to hang out with me when I do these sometimes. Likes to hang out in the office, which is a cool thing. I enjoy having her over in the office with me. So um, let's see. I'll walk that one up a little bit. Walk that one up. All right. Now that I've made a total mess of that, I think we have the walker. The rubber ducky walker is done, folks. I think we've got a, a really good look at him here. Like I said, I'll harden up a couple of these lines. This is going to look phenomenal when it's inked. I hope you guys dig it. Let me straighten that up for everybody to see. There we go. Straighten it up a little more with the camera. I hope you guys like it. Um, I am going to be checking this one out thank you so much for all the compliments i appreciate that um <clears throat> i'm gonna be inking this one up and posting it up uh fairly quick oh let's see what else do we have coming up um i i've got to make a final call on the uh boba fett uh for kevin which i said i was gonna do over the weekend but i got tied up with the knocking this book out so i've got to get that going um also got uh something really cool for you guys coming up which is the uh the large combat page i need you to vote on this one if you're watching this one tonight i'm going to push it through uh tomorrow afternoon until tomorrow's card then i'm going to be pulling it down and making a decision based on the votes go to that post check the timeline check the page uh look for the 11 by 17 versus uh poll that i put up a couple of days ago you guys be sure and vote freddy versus jason um godzilla versus king kong or if you want to see um oh my goodness Opti uh, optimus prime versus uh megatron let me know which one you guys want to see because i'm going to be uh, pulling that down tomorrow i'm going to be taking the votes down and tallying them up and verifying and then boom we're done I'm going to start on that 11 by 17 projects very, very soon. And I will be doing that live, believe it or not. I'm going to lay it out just like I do a card. And I'm going to be working on that massive piece right here for you guys. Um, that's pretty much it for tonight. Thank you very much for hanging out with me. And uh, I will see you guys tomorrow. I'm going to draw something up super early in the morning for tomorrow so that we have 
uh, it all day for everybody to see and get prepped for. And then uh, I'll draw it tomorrow afternoon at regular time uh, around 3 o'clock so that we can start getting that because I've got to get this book out today and uh, over to the colorist. And I've got some stuff that I'll pre be previewing for you guys later as well. On that, I'll show a couple pages if you're digging it um, with the Kickstarter release and preview and stuff also coming up. So talk to you tomorrow. Thanks for watching.